two. Try that now. What are we in the court? I would like to thank everyone for coming this evening, and let's get this ceremony started. Pursuant to the New Jersey Open Public Meetings Act, Act NJSA 104-10, adequate notice of this meeting has been provided by advertising such notice in the Home News Tribune, the Asbury Park Press, the Board of Office, the schools, and on Cablevision Channel 118 and Verizon Files Channel 24, and by filing such notice with the Township Clerk. This meeting was scheduled for Tuesday, May 19, 2015. The Board will take formal action on payment of bills and other agenda items. Thank you. The Old Bridge Township Board of Education acknowledges that the law of this state establishes that members of the public, including members of the Board, have the right to record public board meetings using audio or video recording devices provided that that act of recording does not interfere with the business of this public board meeting. Therefore, the board makes it known that any such recording is to be considered the private recording of the individual and in no manner represents the official record of this board. The board therefore takes no responsibility for such private recording and completely disavows any future use. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Roll call. Andriani. Present. Porcelli. Here. Prima Here. Ellis Foster? Here. Hopman? Mongan? Here. Singh? Here. Weber? Silikowski? Here. Quorum exists. Okay, would everybody please stand for the pledge? Thank you. I pledge allegiance to, to the, the flag of the United, of the United States, States of America. Of America. And to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation under, God, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Mr. Borselli, would you like to read the Code of Ethics? Thank you. Sure. Um, recognize that authority rests with the Board of Education and make no personal promises nor take any private action that may compromise the Board. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mara, uh, do we have any house cleaning? Yeah, there are some administrative changes. Uh, members of the Board, anything in yellow on your agenda was not on the agenda from the agenda review meeting, and administrative corrections in the agenda in your packet are all indicated in green. Uh, members of the public, uh, there are four administrative changes to tonight's agenda. A schedule of those corrections is at the table with the, uh, with the agendas. Thank you, Mr. Silikowski. Thank you. Okay, uh, I need a motion for approval of the minutes. Mongan will move. Thank you, Ms. Mongan. I need a second. Borsili. Any discussion? No discussion. I see no hands. Mr. Mayor, roll call. Hendriani? Yes. Borsilli? Yes. De Prima? Yes. Ellis Foster? Yes. Mongan? Yes. Singh? Yes. Solikowski? Yes. Resolution 1 passes. Thank you. I see we have our student representative over here, and uh, I'm sure she has a lot to say. The floor is all yours. Thank you. Um, at the high school, prom preparations are underway. Seniors are signing prom contracts in order to purchase their tickets, which are $100. Again, prom is at the Hilton in East Brunswick from 6.30 to 10.30. The Disney trip is less than three weeks away, and it'll be June 5th to the 9th. Overch High School will be having a lip dub Sunday, May 31st at 7 a.m. All students are encouraged to participate. As always, we are very proud of our marching band, especially while watching their interview on ABC News. We wish them the best of luck in Normandy. The boys and girls 4x800 placed first at GMCs. Also, the boys won the 4x400, the 3200 ran by Gerard D'Ambrosio, and Hazem Miawad won the 400 and the 800. The girls lacrosse team defeated North Brunswick 15-14 to, to win the GMC championship. Seven goals were scored by Samantha Potts. Our winner of the Mr. Olbridge competition was Alec Meza, followed by Henry Salientes, who took second, and Dan Hemhauser in third. The boys were extremely entertaining and truly showcased their talent. Senior Scholarship Night is next Thursday, May 28th, in the auditorium. 
The peer program just finished their interviews with juniors interested in participating in the program next year. And lastly, as you all know, Oldbridge was named, Oldbridge High School was named a National School of Character. And the, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and one last thing to explain the lip dub, it's kind of like a music video. I don't know if you guys saw the one from 2013, but it's on YouTube. So it's just like a fun way for the whole school to get involved and uh, lip sync to some good music. Thank you. Thank you. Very well done. Okay, now we go to the exciting portion of our agenda tonight, the recognition of all our great teachers. I believe there's gonna be 16 teachers uh, recognized tonight, and I, I wanna thank you for being with us all these years and doing such an outstanding job. Okay, can we start it? Thank you, Mr. Solikowski. I just want to say a few things as our two members, our co-chairs of Instructional Council, uh, Ms. Deirdre Kabicki, Vice Principal at Salk School, and Mr. Ryan Sobin, a teacher at Madison Park School, who uh, head up this endeavor as they prepare. So this wouldn't be possible without them, so thank you very much, and all of Instructional Council for your work. <laughs> this evening is also supported by the Oldbridge Education Association, the Oldbridge Administrators Association, the Oldbridge D D Directors Organization, the Oldbridge Supervisors Association, and of course the PTSA for their generosity. But one round of applause should go to Patrick Murphy and the High School Jazz Band for entertaining us on our way in. So thank you to them. I'm Deirdre Kabicki, Vice Principal at Jonas Sock Middle School. And again, this is Ryan Sobin, Special Education Teacher at Madison Park Elementary School. And together we stand before you as the co-chairs of the Instructional Council. The Instructional Council is an advisory committee composed of teachers, administrators, as well as central administrative members. The purpose of the council is to collaboratively review and address instructional issues and district policies to make recommendations for improvements. In addition, the Instructional Council has been the steam engine that drives this wonderful teacher and educational service professional recognition program. This program would not be what it is today without the generous contributions from the OBEA, the OBAA, OBSA, and PTA President's Council. It has been said the mediocre teacher tells, the good teacher explains, the superior teacher demonstrates, and the great teacher inspires. And it is clear to me that we are in the presence of greatness tonight. I would like to thank the educators we honor here tonight for inspiring our children of Oldbridge. And on behalf of the Instructional Council, congratulations to all of you. So without further ado, I would like to begin tonight's program, and I will pass the microphone along to our first principal speaker, Mr. Christopher McHugh, principal of Carpenter Elementary School. I'm joined at the podium tonight by PTA President Kelly Vitale and M. Scott Carpenter's Teacher of the Year, Nicole Guardino. From the moment Ms. Guardino entered Carpenter Elementary School four years ago, she made an immediate impact to our building. She brings a tremendous amount of energy and enthusiasm to Carpenter School. It's not uncommon as you walk by our classroom to see singing, dancing, yoga, kids playing the bells, sign language, and just kids just enjoying learning by doing some arts and crafts, which I know she enjoys. Ms. Guardino is involved in numerous activities at Carpenter Elementary School. She's part of our Character Education Committee, Professional Development Committee, our iPad Committee, our Gardening Committee, our School Safety Team member. She is our MC at the Talent Show. She's helped coach the fifth grade volleyball team, and she attends all of our PTA functions at night. Two special events that Ms. Guardino organized this year at Carpenter Elementary School. The first one was our Play-Doh drive. After hearing about a young girl in Texas that while in the hospital uh, utilized her time by playing 
with Play-Doh and it made her feel better, Ms. Guardino organized a school-wide Play-Doh drive where we collected hundreds of tubs of Play-Doh and we donated it to local hospitals here so that we could carry out on this child's wish here in New Jersey and have children enjoy while they're in the hospital playing with Play-Doh to take their minds off of being sick. Also, she organized a Daisy Day in which this Thursday, students at Carpenter Elementary School will get dressed up and then families can donate a dollar and our goal is to align our hallways with daisies and the money that we raise will be donated to CHOP Hospital. When I prepare for this speech, one of my favorite things is I go up to her former students and her current students and get some ideas and quotes and what they like about Ms. Gordino. The first thing that came out of everybody's mouth was she's really, really nice. She makes learning fun, she's kind, she does fun activities, and she's very silly. Not only is Ms. Guardino an outstanding teacher, her colleagues will tell you two things about her. She's super organized, and she loves to do arts and crafts. In fact, they referred to her classroom as A.C. Moore of Carpenter Elementary School. <laughs> Ms. Guardino is a huge sports fan and a diehard Ranger fan, and I know she has some dreams of the Stanley Cup coming here in June, right? <laughs> but as I prepared a speech, I saw something the other day, and that truly sums up Ms. Guardino. As I looked out the window as she went outside to do lunch duty, about 20 kids, her former students, came around and surrounded her. And the look on their faces was as if she was a movie star. Uh, High-fiving her, hugging her, jumping up and down to see her. And that truly sums up who you are. To win this award is truly special, but to win this award in your fourth year is amazing. It just speaks volumes of the type of teacher you are and the type of person you are. I know I speak on behalf of the entire Carpenter School staff, students, and community. We thank you for everything you do. We're lucky to have you here, and we look forward to many years to come. Congratulations, Ms. Guardino. At this time, I would like to call up Dr. Ferry, Principal at Cheesequake Elementary School. Okay, I'm honored to be joined this evening by Ms. Joe Keefe, our PTA president, and Ms. Renee Vetri, Cheese Quakes Teacher of the Year. It is my honor and privilege this evening to be in this room with teachers who are the best of the best, and most especially to have this opportunity to share some comments about Cheese Quake Elementary School's Teacher of the Year, Ms. Renee Vetri. Sometime last year, there was a principal's meeting during which every administrator was asked to name the teacher who influenced and shaped his or her life the most. Several of the principals here in this room tonight who came through Old Bridge Schools spoke glowingly of their choice, Mr. Rudy Lopes, a retired legendary Old Bridge teacher. Little did I know as I watched Ms. Vetri's extraordinary teacher over my first few years as Cheesequake principal that the legendary teacher we honor tonight is actually the daughter of Mr. Lopes. And this left me thinking about whether greatness is inherited via good genes or learned through other means. I believe Ms. Vetri learned excellence from watching her father's commitment to his students and his profession. She acquired impeccable habits, attitudes, skills, and outlook from seeing it every day. And that is what is happening to Cheesequake's fifth grade students who are in Ms. Vetri's classroom. They are experiencing phenomenal academic success and are demonstrating truly uncommon motivation, drive, and a lust for learning because they are learning from Ms. Vetri and are soaking in greatness from the extraordinary example of their exemplary teacher. Ms. Vetri is a master teacher. I have rarely met a teacher of her caliber in two decades in this profession. She has rightfully earned the respect and admiration of her colleagues, parents, students, and this principal because of her warmth as a human being, her collegiality, her unwavering professionalism at all times, her trend-setting talents in delivering instruction, and her imp impeccable, conscientious work ethic. As a principal, I must be a leader and a teacher, but I also very much see myself as a student of success. And I have studied Ms. Vetri's success because I have learned 
and I believe I have learned more from Ms. Vetri than she has learned from me. She may be too humble to say that, but when we see greatness, we must learn from it and spread it. Student growth percentiles, or SGPs, provide a very clear, objective, and scientific way to measure how much students grow in state assessments from one year to the next. Year after year, Ms. Vetri's students' results on a state test are phenomenal. She meets every student where he or she is, and within a year, has them soaring to new heights. Evidence of uncommon and extraordinary growth in her students is undeniable when looking at assessment results on paper. But I must tell you, it is also undeniable if you step foot into her classroom, feel the environment of the class in your heart, and see the look in her students' eyes. They are hungry, and they have an insatiable appetite to learn and grow. There is contagious enthusiasm. Ms. Vetri uses assessment data as well as any teacher I've met, and she and her students build upon every and any weakness noted as they work day by day. Ms. Vetri's differentiated instruction is poetry in motion and something that must be seen to appreciate. Ms. Vetri can be found inside at lunchtime helping students each and every day and at the school every evening, spending additional hours grading day after day. Her commitment to this profession and to her students is inspiring and her efforts, pal passion, talents, and skills are laudable. In short, to characterize Ms. Vetri's classroom best, I would simply say there is greatness and excellence. The same greatness she learned from her father, Cheesequake Elementary School students are learning from Ms. Vetri. Thank you for your excellence and for helping your students and our school achieve profound success. You are an illuminating model of the finest in this profession and an inspiration to us all. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to introduce Cooper's principal, Ms. Gramada. Be careful there. I'm going to ride a bike. I shall. <laughs> Good evening. Tonight, I'm here. I'm joined by Ms. Pat DeLuco, a member of our Cooper PTA and our 2015 Cooper Teacher of the Year, Mrs. Jennifer Sullivan. Ready? <laughs> Jennifer came to us in Old Bridge when she was four and hasn't left us since. She, she's a product of the Old Bridge school system. Her path was McDivitt, Sandberg, and then a member of the graduating class of 2002. As a student, her passions were many, but in particular, playing soccer for our very own Coach Lotzi, who's being nominated and who's here tonight as well. The love for soccer was parlayed into coaching children with disabilities for two years and training children age eight and under. Academically, Jen went on to Misericordia University where she double majored in elementary education in English while also playing collegiate soccer. Then Mrs. Sullivan went back to school to continue her education where she obtained her certification for teacher of students with disabilities from Rutgers University, go are you, <laughs> and just recently obtained her master's in administration and leadership from Georgian Court. There's no question why Mrs. Sullivan is standing here tonight. She's always giving her time to her students. I can literally walk by her room at any given lunch period and see her there, whether they're eating, hanging out, getting extra help in math or language arts, or if she happens to be outside on duty, she's got her sneakers laced up <laughs> and she's out there playing kickball, basketball, or what's come to known as a Cooper favorite, World Cup, which I, I have to get myself in on that one too. Um, in addition to her unwavering dedication in the classroom, Mrs. Sullivan has participated in founded and co-advised countless programs at Cooper. Seeing as how character education is a huge part of Cooper School, it's important to note Jen's involvement and being paramount in us obtaining our state recognition. The fifth grade students back in 2012 participated in a service learning project with Hauser Farms, where they received national recognition for this wonderful project, and it is still in place today. With this project as a stepping stone this year, Ms. Sullivan posted another service learning project on the Donors Choose website, which was sponsored by Disney, and the donations are made to help fund our, farm, our farming service project. The goal is to plant crops out of the classroom and donate all grown vegetables to our local food bank. 
recently, with the help of Mr. Hauser and his son, John Michael, Cooper students were able to plant crops outdoors in our very own garden, which is extraordinary. Uh, the yield of this garden will be donated to our community food bank, and Mrs. Sullivan will once again have left an indelible mark on the students at Cooper. It is clear for these reasons and so many more that we could not honestly take our two minutes to say, but Mrs. Sullivan exemplifies OB pride, and this is why the staff and students alike were thrilled to recognize her for the 2015 Cooper Teacher of the Year. On behalf of Mrs. Sullivan and the Cooper PTA, we would like to congratulate all the 2015 recipients and are grateful for this opportunity to shine the spotlight on a tremendous talent here in Old Bridge. At this time, I would like to introduce the principal of Grissom Elementary, Dr. Anthony Arrico. Thank you. I'm standing here tonight with my PTA president of Grissom School, Amanda Jenks. Good evening. It is my honor and privilege to stand before you tonight to introduce the 2014-15 Virgil I. Grissom Elementary School Teacher of the Year. As I sat in my office trying to figure out the best way to describe and highlight the wonderful professional that is Grissom's recipient this year, I could not help but to keep coming back to the fairy tale, The Three Little Pigs, which dates back 130 years, relax. <laughs> which dates back 130 years to London in 1886. Several fairy tales like this one have been read to kids over the years to teach them a meaningful lesson concerning life. This strategy has been very successful in doing just that. If you're wondering exactly what the moral of the Three Little Pigs is and, and how I'm going to relate this story to Grissom's Teacher of the Year, let's first start with a quick outline of the story. The story of the Three Little Pigs is about three pigs that set out to build houses on their own. The story then divides into three sections, focusing on how each pig built his house, with the first pig creating the house, his house from straw, the second pig choosing to fabricate his home from sticks. The real meaning of the story becomes apparent when observing the efforts of the third pig, who takes a lot of time to develop and methodically build his home with bricks. As the story progresses, the big bad wolf attempts to capture each one of the pigs. However, when he tries to, they run and hide within their homes. The wolf then threatens to blow their homes down in an effort to try to get them to emerge, but the pigs still don't come out of hiding. The wolf very easily blows down the first house of straw and then the second house of sticks. However, when he tried to blow down the house that was created from bricks, he, could, he, he couldn't because it was way too strong. One valuable moral that may be discovered by reading through this fairy tale is that time and effort always pays off. The only thing we can do when being confronted with various degrees of challenges is to be prepared. Simply put, because hard work, in addition to readiness to undertake new ventures, triumphs over challenges at any level. So you may be thinking, what are you getting at here, Rico? To me, the Big Bad Wolf represents the challenge of the district's newly implemented RTI program. The program is intricate, all-encompassing, and needs to be handled with care. Grissom's 2014-15 Teacher of the Year is much like that third little pig. She works hard, she's organized, is patient, understanding, compassionate, empathetic, and she has persevered. She met the challenges that came with the new RTI program, such as a school-wide teacher trepidation and apprehension, and hours and hours of turnkeying teacher professional development and instruction to her fellow peers. She has persevered through her preparation and her hard work. I have admired watching her create a strong foundation, step by step, brick by brick, if you will, of the RTI program within our school. Grissom students and staff have certainly benefited, benefited from all of her hard work. Without any further ado, the star of our story at Grissom School is Michelle Bracuda. I'd now like to call up Mr. John Daly of Madison Park.
All right, good evening, everybody. I'd like to welcome, we have uh, Ms. Stacy Pitts as the PTA, President of Madison Park School, and we also have Maya Johnson, Madison Park's Teacher of the Year. So one thing that Ms. Johnson has religiously asked me to do is call her Maya, whether it's a professional or a recreational dialogue. So today, I'm going to grant her wish as I stand before you and express her exceptional qualities and why she was named Madison Park's Teacher of the Year. Over the past two years, I've witnessed Maya's professional growth and can attest that she made the right choice by obtaining her post-bachelorate in teaching and joining us in the ranks of education. Her previous career in journalism provided her with endless amounts of knowledge and structure that allows her to effectively communicate with her students and colleagues. Maya's approach to teaching provides the appropriate instruction to meet the needs of our diverse group of learners. Maya is smart, articulate, even a little edgy, and likes to think outside the box. Something at Madison Park, we say, that's a bonus. Just a few of Maya's best teaching practices. She's open to suggestions. She's self-reflective. She's creative. She shares well with others. She's flexible, unable to be rattled. Well, at least you play it off well. And she shows empathy. Those are pretty important qualities in an educator in today's society. One thing I will share with you is when I see your name pop up in the email thread, I know the wheels are turning, and I'm hesitant at first, but yet they're always filled with positive questions, insightful information that I could share, pictures of events that she's captured at the school, and or just a reminder to sign up for Relay for Life. <laughs> As you enter room number eight at the park, soon to be room number three, you get embraced with warmth, you observe excitement, and you catch curious learners asking meaningful questions. So that to me right there, when I go into that room every single day, is amazing, and that's what I enjoy. That being said, it is clear she consistently sets high expectations for all students from day one. These expectations allow her energy to flow and provide a learning environment that is second to none. Aside from teaching, Maya continues to be an integral part of Madison Park's community. She not only shares the vision, but models that we need to continue with civic-minded activities that involve our school-wide character initiative and provide valuable resources to those in need. Her mindset helps Madison Park continue to move forward. She leads the charge each year with our Relay for Life team which last year raised over $6,000. That takes countless hours of preparation, organization, and leadership. Maya is involved with the Morning Enrichment Program, which provides students with a project-based learning opportunities outside the regular classroom hours. She participates in all extracurricular affairs and offers pertinent professional development that is aligned with our school goals. Unfortunately, tonight I am unable to list all the activities but I am sure you get the gist. Maya, you are celebrated tonight for being a true role, role model to our students and colleagues. In the end, your efforts result in a boost of self-confidence and a positive self-image for the Madison Park community. Kudos to you, Mrs. Johnson. I now call up Mrs. Lori Coletti, principal of McDivitt Elementary School. Good evening. I would like to introduce my PTA president, Kim Basilino, and McDivitt's Teacher of the Year 2015, Ms. Sarah Brunetti. <laughs> Ms. Brunetti has been teaching for eight years and is an integral member of our educational staff at McDivitt. 
However, I remember the first time I met Miss Brunetti, her first year teaching, straight from Hawaii, with flowers in her hair. She was so beautiful, she still is. I keep asking her, where's her flowers? Where's her flowers? Every day, where, are you wearing your flowers today? No. She sort of gave them up. Every once in a while they show up though, right? Over the years, Ms. Brunetti has demonstrated her knowledge and skills as an outstanding teacher. Ms. Brunetti is a dedicated professional. She contributes a wealth of information to the staff and student body. Her students are truly enriched by her enthusiasm, her devotion, and her support. Ms. Brunetti models patience, compassion, a good sense of humor, and gives wholeheartedly to help her students succeed. Let me share a little of what your colleagues and students have written about you. You take the time to go beyond your classroom and all your responsibilities. Let's see. She runs Sunshine. She runs the Relay for Life, which she works on all year long. She does lunch duty, and she's part of our character ed team. You are devoted and supportive of your students. You are sincere and caring. She is our A number one advocate for her children. Your children always come first. You have given learning and school a new meaning, and you make learning fun and enjoyable, as is evidenced every day when those children come in and can't wait to see you. Your ability to share your outstanding professional teaching talent is exhibited in your commitment to your students' academic progress. You are genuine and considerate. Ms. Brunetti is the type of teacher who is ready to pitch in and, what, and help wherever and whenever she is needed. She never says no, like it's not in her vocabulary. The staff, students, and parents are proud to call you our Teacher of the Year. I would like to leave you with this poem. The most admired teacher is caring, kind, and smart. She always has her students' best interests in her heart. She, loves, she helps us love to learn. Her lessons are very clear. She motivates with praise and is always quite sincere. She's upbeat and supportive and a great role model, too. She is the perfect teacher, and she is definitely you. Congratulations. Here. At this time, I would like to introduce Mr. Raymond Payton, who is the principal of Memorial Elementary School. Congratulations to all of tonight's recipients on your award and your accomplishments. I welcome our PTA president, Mrs. Kathy Lynch. Thank you for being here this evening. I would also like to welcome Mrs. Lindsay Yanazelli, our last year's Teacher of the Year recipient. I'm honored and delighted to be with you tonight. Mrs. Jody Florio, Memorial's Teacher of the Year winner, is a very dedicated and compassionate teacher. Mrs. Florio has been a valued member of the Memorial faculty for four years. However, she has spent eight years in the profession. Her enthusiasm, her innovativeness, and her genuine concern for students in education are exemplary. Her flexibility in working with students and teachers in the public has earned her an invaluable reputation as an excellent teacher who truly cares about students. Although she is happily married for 11 years, she is a busy mother of two children. However, she's still very involved in all the facets in our school. Mrs. Florio has completed a master's degree in Rutgers University in education. Additionally, she is willing to share her resources with fellow staff members and will always help to solve a problem. She's a real asset to Memorial School and to the district. To that end, I would like to introduce Mrs. Yanazelli as her fellow colleague to expand on this and certainly pass the torch to this year's Teacher of the Year recipient. Yay. 
I've had the honor to know and work with Mrs. Florio for about four years now at Memorial. Although I teach second and she teaches kindergarten, we get the chance to talk during the school day. Our conversations revolve around the same topic, our own kids. You see, Mrs. Florio is a mom to two amazing kids, Caitlin and Tyler. She knows, just like any parent here tonight, what it's like to send your child off to school for the first time. The overwhelming feelings of pride, love, and sometimes fear. Fear that your most precious possession, your child, is going to spend the day with someone that's not you. You're putting your trust in a complete stranger. You trust that they will educate your child, instill a love of learning, make them smile, calm their fears, but what we really want for our children is for them to feel loved. We want them to love school and love their teacher. Mrs. Florio gets that. She wants the same for her own children. She treats each of her students the way she'd want her children to be treated. She can tell the difference between a student practicing her curtsy or really, really needing to use the bathroom. <laughs> she shares in their heartache if they lose something or worse, someone that they love. She can see it in their face if they're not feeling well or haven't eaten breakfast that morning. She listens to their stories and calms their fears. When you walk by Mrs. Florio's classroom during the day, you'll see her students doing many things. Usually you'll see over 20 adoring faces looking at their teacher while she teaches. If it's the right time of day, you might see full out dancing, but what really stands out to me every time I go by is the smiles. Children in Mrs. Florio's class are smiling. They're learning and they're happy. They're safe and sound. I know Mrs. Florio does not easily accept this recognition that she so genuinely deserves, so I was trying to decide what I could do to convince her. Her students were more than willing to talk to me during recess one day. They shared a lot of information about what makes Mrs. Florio so special. But one of the questions I asked them was, what do you think Mrs. Florio would be doing if she wasn't a teacher? Devin said she'd be a doctor because when someone gets hurt, she puts a Band-Aid on them. <laughs> Elena said she'd be a store owner because she goes shopping a lot. <laughs> Kirby said she'd be a mom and she'd just stay home. But the one that really got me was she'd be a superhero because she taught me how to read. I'm here to tell you that you are a superhero to your students. As a kindergarten teacher, you have the enormous responsibility to set the tone for that child's first experience with school. Your smile brightens their day. Your enthusiasm and love for them truly shows, and they can feel it. There's a quote about teachers that I think embodies you. A good teacher is like a candle. It consumes itself to light the way for others. Every child that steps foot in your classroom comes with a little flickering flame. On behalf of your students, their parents, and the staff that works with you. Thank you for fueling that flame, seeing that light in them, and allowing it to shine. At this, at this time, I'd like to welcome Dr. Giles, principal of Miller School, to the podium. Good evening, everyone. Joining me this evening is Mrs. Brana, Miller School's PTA president, and tonight it is my honor to introduce to some and welcome others to Miller School's 2014-2015 Old Bridge Teacher Recognition Recipient, Jennifer DiBartolo. Jen is married to Phil, and she is the proud mother of Maddie and Jackson, who are here with us this evening. Mrs. DiBartolo began her teaching career in Oldbridge as a student teacher in 2004 at Memorial School. After student teaching, she split her day between Southwood and Miller schools as a kindergarten teacher during the 2005-2006 school year. Jen joined the Miller School staff full-time in September of 2006, where she currently teaches first grade. It is clear that Jen loves teaching first grade. Her calm, caring, encouraging demeanor is ideal for working with young learners. She offers her students many exciting and interesting activities that even keep reluctant learners actively engaged throughout the day. 
Teaching for Jen is not just a job, it is her passion. Mrs. DiBartolo, Mrs. DiBartolo students created a poster that I will give to her tomorrow about their teacher. I do want to share with her some of the things that were on the poster though. At the top of the poster it says 2014-2015 Teacher of the Year. M, Miller's best teacher. R, she respects her students. S, super smiley and smart. D, delightfully fun. I, inspiring. B, believes in us. A, amazing at writing and math. R, reads to us awesome stories. T, talented. O, which they did a D before that O, does an outstanding job. The L, we love her so much. O, our teacher of the year. So I have a great poster to present to her tomorrow. It has been said, again, that the mediocre teacher tells, the good teacher explains, the superior teacher demonstrates, and the great teacher inspires. Mrs. Bartolo students are fortunate to be in the presence of greatness each and every day. You are to be commended for devoting your life to inspiring children. So tonight, Jen, we thank you for all you do and a job well done. We're glad you're receiving this very well-deserved honor. On behalf of the staff, the students, and the parents of Miller School, congratulations and much continued success. At this time, I would like to introduce our next presenter, Mr. Joseph Maranzoli, Principal of Shepherd School. Good evening. Before Mr. Maranzoli presents, I just want to make a public correction to an error I somehow made in my speech. Mr. Maranzoli's, uh, Mr. Maranzoli's mentor teacher that inspired him the most was Mr. Vito Conforti. And I talked to Ms. Vetri about her dad, Mr. Vito Conforti, several times. And somehow Mr. Rudy Lopes', Lopes his name popped into my head. So I gave a shout out to another excellent teacher. So that is deserved Mr. Lopes. But no, Ms. Vetri's father, Mr. Vito Conforti is an extraordinary science teacher at Salk and a cheesecake teacher. And I now will turn over the microphone to Mr. Vito Conforti's protege, <laughs> the Shepherd Principal, Mr. Manzoli. Thank you, Dr. Ferry, and congratulations to all the teacher, uh, teachers of the year out there. I'm joined at the podium uh, tonight by Mrs. Vega, our PTA president, and Ms. Jennifer Hagen, Alan B. Shepherd's Teacher of the Year. Now, as you all know, tonight is truly a special night where we take some moments uh, to acknowledge the special qualities that have been highlighted and recognized in the special teachers that are in our buildings. It is often said that teaching successfully takes special skills, patience, and caring. Now these qualities are certainly not at all lacking in the candidates selected by her peers and named as Alan B. Shepard's Teacher of the Year. This teacher, although new to Alan B. Shepard, is not new to the district. Mrs. Hagen worked as a preschool teacher in the district and was welcomed to Shepard at the beginning of the 2014-2015 school year. Assigned as a special education teacher for grades three and four, Mrs. Hagen immediately embraced her students her new colleagues, and her newfound canvas. It was clear from the outset that this high energy go-getter wanted to expose her students to as many character building and life skill projects as possible. She partnered with our school counselor and developed numerous projects which she infused into her classes. Working together in collaboration with her colleagues, a new format of a morning meeting was jointly developed where the entire grade level of classes came together to greet each other and to have some time to create seasonal crafts. These not only helped integrate the entire grade level of students, but also developed gross and fine motor skills, refined varying levels of social skills, and helped create beautiful objects which were used to cheer and brighten the lives of the families at the Ronald McDonald House as well as some of our troops overseas. 
carrying on with an Alan B. Shepard's tradition of working with the Ronald McDonald House in New Brunswick, uh, which began when Dr. Hoker was at Shepard, Mrs. Hagen facilitated the collection of toys and much needed supplies that were then brought to the Ronald McDonald House to help make very difficult situations just a little more bearable. I have no doubt that Mrs. Hagen's students have truly learned the importance of service and the meaning of being a caring community member. This Smile Ambassador project was one of two projects at Shepherd that won a Promising Practice Award this year from Character.org organization. It is inspiring to see someone who is so nonstop, who is so involved in teaching, in tutoring after school, involved in the PTA, involved in SEPTA, and then goes home to a family and is equally involved in their lives. She cares about her students immensely, and she routinely shares and reminds me of that fact every time she explains her next project or proposal or great idea. She's very collaborative, and she never shies away from any idea if she believes that it is in the best interest of her students or the general school population. She even asked me to mention that she is exceptionally grateful to the para in her room, Ms. Kathy Charette, as well as her colleagues and the PTA, who have been very, very supportive of her projects. It is my pleasure to present Alan B. Shepherd's Teacher of the Year, Ms. Jennifer Hayden. And now, and now I'd like to call to the podium Ms. Karen Foley, Principal of Southwood School. Good evening. I'm joined at the podium by Mrs. Stephanie Stellingworth, PTA President of Southwood School. It is with great pleasure that I introduce Southwood Elementary School's Teacher of the Year, Mr. Andrew Lewis. Mr. Lewis. <laughs> Mr. Lewis, a fifth grade teacher, is only a second year member of our staff. However, he has made a tremendous impact on our school in such a relatively short time. Andrew's being joined this evening by three very special women in his life, his mom, Robin, his girlfriend, Gabriella, and his sister, Brittany, so I welcome them here this evening. Mr. Lewis graduated from the College of New Jersey in 2012 and earned his master's degree from Nova Southeastern University earlier this year. Mr. Lewis serves as building representative and communications chair for the OBEA. He is an executive board member of the Middlesex County Education Association and a member of the NJEA Delegate Assembly. Andrew is actively involved at Southwood School, serving as the PTA teacher liaison and an advisor to the student council. He is an active contributor to our character education committee, which incidentally guided Southwood School in being named a National School of Character earlier this month. He successfully, thank you, he successfully co-authored a Whole Food Garden Grant and he's also acquired technology for his students as a recipient of several grants through the Donors Choice Program. While I've always been impressed with Andrew's ambition and dedication to his profession, I felt that it was necessary to learn a little bit more about the man behind the achievements. While I knew that Andrew had a keen interest in volcanoes, I was unaware of his passion for being a pirate. His students eagerly shared stories about the day he donned a pirate's costume, including a hook. When I pressed for thing, further for things that I needed to know about Mr. Lewis, his fifth graders revealed his disdain for glitter, as well as Harry Potter. <laughs> Mr. Lewis, your students said if they could buy you a present for being Teacher of the Year, it would be a new watch one which does not move 360 degrees, <laughs> or a seat belt to strap you into your teacher's chair. <laughs> your colleagues have mentioned that they would love to take you for dinner, but they just can't find a restaurant that specializes in chicken fingers or pasta with butter. <laughs> Over 
and over again, I heard that you make learning fun, and your students certainly enjoy your many jokes. However, when asked what makes you such a special teacher, one of your students told me this. I love that he really cares and makes sure that we understand. He really wants us to do our best. On behalf of your students and colleagues, I want to thank you for your unwavering commitment to Southwood School. You truly touch the lives of those you teach and exemplify our motto, together we can make a difference. I congratulate you on being named Southwood School's Teacher of the Year and wish you all the best. Thank you. I'd like to introduce to the podium Mr. Benjamin Fox, Interim Principal of Rose Elementary School. Good evening, everyone. And with me tonight is Mrs. Lucy Kurtz, our PTA president and Mr. Drew Hastenstab, Mr. H, and I welcome them. Um, first, I would like to con extend my congratulations to the entire Old Bridge District community, from the students and their families, to the teachers, the administrators, and to the Board of Education for achieving such a high and distinguished honor as being named a National District of Character, one of only three in the country. Old Bridge Schools... <laughs> Old Bridge Schools are doing their best to change their little parts of the world for the children of Old Bridge, as well as for society as a whole. So keep up the great work and keep changing your part of the world for the better. Speaking of great work, I am here tonight in place of Mrs. Lowry to represent the Raymond Voorhees School in recognizing Drew as its Teacher of the Year. That too is a great honor as well as a culmination of great work. Now, what can I say about Mr. H as he seems to be known to all and which I have been calling him since I met him because I can't always remember how to say his name? Well, I can't really say much about him because I hardly know him. I have only been at Voorhees since April 1st, about six weeks. Not enough time to really get to know someone personally or as a teacher. But I can tell you that he is a gentleman, he's very personable, he's interesting to talk with, he's great with the children, he's kind-hearted, he has a big smile, a deep laugh, and it's the first time I saw him dressed other than gym clothes and he's a sharp dresser. I can also tell you that he provides his lesson plans on time and carries them out accordingly whenever I have seen him in the gym. Other than that, what I can tell you that really counts the most about Mr. H is what the Voorhees K-5 children say about him. So I went around to the classes today to ask all 300 and more of them to ask their opinion. So here we go. In the kindergarten, he lets us play parachutes. He plays a lot with us, all play. He is awesome, I got that about 23 times. He helps us follow directions. He helps us when we get hurt. He is always nice to us. First grade, he is the best gym teacher ever. This is a great one. He is fun, but at the same time, he's also responsible, Amaya. <laughs> he makes games for us. Second grader, I love to play with him. Third graders, he is always making up different activities for our school. He makes gym fun and exciting. He makes all the field day activities for every grade. Fourth grade, he is a jokester, but gets serious when he needs to be. <laughs> he pretends a lot, and this one I have lots of question marks. He names his fake chicken. He he'll tell you about that. He encourages us when we are not doing well. He helps us with our coordination so we can draw better. Fifth grade. He started field day for us at Voorhees, and we thank him for that. He teaches respect while playing against other teams. He really knows what he is doing when he teaches us. When you don't understand something, he really explains it. He is an amazing gym teacher. He reminds us about sportsmanship. He makes our activities challenging for us. 
He makes exercise fun and safe at the same time. He teaches us teamwork and how to get along with each other. Only 200 more. He likes us to have fun with us. He shows us how to have fun while learning. He never tells us to give up. And the best one, he is a pretty nice guy. And finally, what I can tell you about Mr. H comes directly from his own words regarding what he sees as his greatest accomplishment. Quote, my greatest accomplishments are not the diplomas on the wall, formal awards, nor the letter of commendation, but the successes I've achieved with my students. The true rewards come from their accomplishments, not just the mastery of a skill or outstanding on their report card, they are the times I hear my students using what I have taught them for personal enrichment. It is the times when I can open their minds and their hearts to help those in our community and throughout the world. Congratulations to Mr. H and to Voorhees for having him as their teacher. And he's also here with his wife. Am I correct? Okay. And now I'd like to introduce Mr. Jason Lynch, the assistant principal from Salk. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I will hit Good evening. Unfortunately, Mr. Rezis could not be here this evening as he and his wife are expecting a baby at any moment. Joining me at the podium this evening is Jonah Salk Middle School PTA President, Mrs. Maria Rich, as well as it is great pleasure to, that I introduce to you Ms. Stacy Sweeter, Jonah Salk Middle School's 2014-2015 Teacher of the Year. Born and raised in Oldbridge and a product of the Oldbridge Township Public School System, Ms. Weaver taught in Piscataway for two years before coming to Osak in 2009. During the last six years, Stacy has been educating the students of Jonah Sock Middle School in mathematics in both the general education setting and the special education settings as well. During the short time, she has done an amazing job and we are extremely lucky that she did not find a permanent home in Piscataway. Obviously, she is, without question, an excellent math teacher that provides this community's children an education which prepares them for the rest of their lives. But Stacy has done so much more beyond the classroom walls and the demanding roles of an educator. She has taken on leadership roles as our math coordinator. She coaches our boys volleyball team as well as the girls volleyball team over Carl Sandburg Middle School. And she also finds time to organize and host career day for our eighth grade students at Jonas Salk. And she does the makeup for the students in our school play. She also writes the academic questions. She also writes the math questions for the academic challenge. She recently prepared and supervised our eighth grade math team for a competition at St. Joseph High School, where we finished seventh place out of 25 schools. One defining characteristic that makes Ms. Sweeter such an outstanding teacher is her constant reflection on every responsibility that she takes on. She questions everything and everyone to be certain that there is no better way to perform a task and to ensure that her students are receiving the best education possible. I may receive countless emails, visits to my office, or get stopped in the hall hundreds of times a year by her, but I would not have it any other way. Because I know behind every question asked is a calculated method to make our school community a better place to work and learn. On behalf of the staff, students, and parents of Jonas Salk Middle School, we'd like to again congratulate Ms. Congratulate Ms. Sweeter Thank you for all that you do for our school community and keep the questions coming. Thank you. At this time, it's my pleasure to bring up the principal of Carl Sandburg Middle School, Dr. Martha Simon. Closer. <laughs> I'm joined at the podium this evening by our PTA president, uh, Mrs. Roseanne Laconti, and on behalf of the students and the staff and the families of Carl Sandburg Middle School, I am proud to introduce our outstanding Teacher of the Year, Ms. Kathy Fisher.
I promised her I would keep it short when I showed her I had like eight pages. She said, no, no, keep it really short. I want to be up here. Mrs. Fisher began her career here in Oldbridge as a substitute teacher before uh, joining the ranks as a full-time reading teacher. And for the last 25 years, she has dedicated her time, her expertise, and her energy to serving the students of Sandburg as an English language arts teacher. Her dedication to our school goes far beyond her own classroom. She supports her co colleagues by serving as our English language arts coordinator, and she is actively involved in volunteering to assist with all types of school-wide activities, such as the Builders Club Talent Show, the St. Jude Basketball-a-thon. Um, she's a member of our character education team and our Relay for Life committee. Mrs. Fisher's colleagues know that they can depend on her. She is the go-to person for answering questions, commandeering supplies, now that you know where the secret storage is, and providing support for her colleagues. She has been fearless in the face of many new challenges in education, especially this year. And her just show me what to do and I'll figure it out attitude has been an exemplary model for the entire school. And we appreciate your leadership. Mrs. Fisher has had a profound impact on her students as well. Many of her students, former students, come back to visit her or when they see her, they often comment about what a wonderful experience that they had in your classroom and that you made them love learning. Her colleagues note that Mrs. Fisher makes every classroom experience accessible to all learners. She's sensitive to the unique needs of, every, of the very diverse population in our building and in her classroom, all things are possible. In addition to setting high standards for student performance on a daily basis, she promotes students' creativity and encourages active, partici active participation in writing and essay contests. Many of her students have been recognized over the years for their work, including VFW and Elks Club essay contests. And earlier this year, two of her students received top honors for the Mahatma Gandhi Arts and Writing Contest. And it should be noticed, noted that Mrs. Fisher attends all of these award ceremonies, whether it's over the weekend or in the evenings, because she's truly dedicated to the boys and girls that she teaches every day. Most mornings, you can find Ms. Fisher walking the halls with her brisk start of the day workout. She has her sneakers on her feet and a smile on her face, and she's ready to energize and inspire her students. During the summer, it's been told that she and several of her colleagues and friends get up at the crack of dawn and walk on the boardwalk, and then it's off to breakfast at, Avon, at the Avon Pavilion. As many of you may already know, Mrs. Fisher will soon have more time for long walks and leisurely breakfast as she embarks on her retirement. She will have more time to spend with her husband, Joseph, who's here this evening, and her sons, Hank and Michael, and her daughter-in-law, Lisa, maybe even a trip to the Far East in your future to visit your family. I know that Kathy is a very humble person who avoids the spotlight and would rather have everyone else around her receive the accolades rather than draw any attention to herself. Tonight is our opportunity as a school community to honor this amazing educator who was respected and loved by all who know her. I am honored to be able to congratulate you this evening and to celebrate the contributions you continue to make at Sandburg every day. Congratulations. <laughs> And now I would like to introduce Tim Dolan, principal of the Ellie McDermott Grade 9 Center. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Simon. I'm joined at the podium tonight with Robert Lotze, the Ellie McDermott Grade 9 Center Teacher of the Year, and Jill DeCaro, the Oberge High School PTA President. Um, I would also like to call up to the stand Mr. Salentano. He is the Supervisor of ELA, Social Studies and English, and it's a special moment. It's the first time, it's the second Teacher of the Year Award winner for the Alameda McDermott Grade 9 Center. It is our first academic core curricular teacher and uh, probably five to ten years ago, this 
probably wouldn't ever happen. So I'd like to share this moment with these two gentlemen up here. It's no surprise for, to me, for anyone else associated with the element, element Dermot Grade 9 Center, that Robert Lotze was named the 2014-15 Teacher of the Year for his, for 19 of his 22 years as an educator. Robert has a reputation of being nothing short of a consummate professional. As a social studies teacher, a coach, and a colleague throughout the district. In addition to that sterling reputation as an educator, Rob is one of the most highly respected girls soccer coaches throughout Middlesex County in the state. Solidifying his credentials most recently with a epic run through the group four final in 2012. Through his tutelage, dozens of talented players have gone on to successful college careers. But most importantly, every girl leaves his program with the foundation for success, no matter what path they choose in life, for hard work and high character. But there is more to Rob Lotze, a social studies teacher, a coach, he's a father, a husband, and a colleague. It lies bubbling just beneath the surface, masqueraded by his cool, confident demeanor, professional dress, and shiny shoes. It was born from the words that were instilled in him by his parents during his formative years. The same ideas for success uttered over and over again throughout his childhood. Arrive to your job early, work hard, and always do your best. I'm sure his parents and family are proud to know that Rob has held steadfast to those words of wisdom and now instills them into his lessons and coaching on a daily basis. The other inspirational force in his life is his life, Janice Lotze, who's also a teacher in the district at Madison Park Elementary School. The lasting image that I have of Rob Lotze in my head is that I'm an accomplished educator, someone who's confident in his prime and currently straddling the world that of the, edu the ever-changing educational divide, one foot, is firmly entrenched in the perceived foregone era of the educational past that doesn't really seem that long ago for us that started teaching before the millennium. The educational era rooted in the importance of historical turning points, the ones that shape the culture, build and destroy empires, the pivotal moments, the dates, the turning points, the leaders, the kings, the presidents, the winners and losers of the historical past. Through the stories, he carefully crafts the lessons for the day, bringing the heroic moments and the misdeeds of the characters of history into today's context, an imaginably vividly entertaining lesson for today's 21st century students. And that there in lies the biggest strength, which is often overlooked and unnoticed by many and underestimated by most of his peers. It's his ability to bridge the gap between those two divides and reach his students on a multitude of levels to deliver the highest quality of education to every single one of his students every single day. Through his hard work and dedication, Rob Lotze has made himself into my, in my opinion, and the opinion of many of his peers, as one of the most highly respected, accomplished educators on the Oldbridge High School campus. So at this time, it is my pleasure to introduce the Element Dermot Grade 9 Center 2014-15 Teacher of the Year, Mr. Robert Lotze. I apologize. At this time, I'd like to invite up to the podium my friend, partner, and colleague, Mr. Sasso, Vincent Sasso, the principal of the Oldbridge High School. Good evening. I am joined this evening by Mrs. Jill DeCaro, PTSA president. She's over there taking a picture. And the honoree of Oldbridge High School's Teacher of the Year Award, Mr. Jamie Brown. <laughs> What can I say about Mr. Brown? He is such an amazing person in so many ways. In the classroom, Mr. Brown exemplifies the key components of a master teacher. 
He provides his students with information, models, and demonstrates the meaning of that information, and then gives them an opportunity to demonstrate their understanding through their own creativeness. His passion for teaching is contagious, and he succeeds every day by positively affecting the lives of his students. But the teaching doesn't end with the sound of a bell. It happens before school, after school, in the hallway, and even during lunch duty. Mr. Brown is the kind of person that truly loves what he does. And this is never more evident than in his role as the coordinator of the peer leadership program. Over the past several years, Mr. Brown has taken a great program and made it even better. His leadership has helped raise tens of thousands of dollars for cancer awareness, Special Olympics, and a host of other worthy causes, even getting hundreds of us to jump in the freezing ocean. As one half of b, &B Productions, Mr. Brown, along with the other B, Mr. Beverly, has become a staple at school-wide celebrations and was recently named Pep Rally Host of the Decade by the Knights of the Silver Bleachers. <laughs> but perhaps his biggest accomplishment came to fruition just about a week ago. Along with Mrs. Fazio, Mr. Brown worked tirelessly to present our high school to the Committee on School Character. His efforts helped stamp Old Bridge High School as one of only 18 high schools in the country to be named a National School of Character. <laughs> but knowing Mr. Brown, he would throw it all away because what matters most to him is family. And that extends beyond his beautiful wife, Courtney, and their precious daughter, Cameron. It's his Old Bridge family or as we say, our kids, many of whom are here with us this evening. They can be quoted by saying, he has helped us learn the true meaning of volunteering and what a pleasure it is to help others in need. His passion is contagious. Mr. Brown is inspiring, sincere, and the true definition of a role model. When we speak, he not only listens, but he hears what we are saying. We have all grown and become better individuals because of our teacher and mentor, Mr. Brown. His dedication and passion is admirable, and the effects of his efforts are evident in the positive atmosphere of our school. And just hand it to me, but there's some good stuff in here on behalf of P P1P, and I know the 910 is here as well. He is a teacher not only by profession, but by character. He teaches us how to be better individuals and in turn help the community. The positive impact Mr. Brown leaves goes beyond the four walls of Old Bridge High School. His selflessness, passion, and positivity can be seen in the eyes and actions of everyone who has the privilege of knowing him. Anyone can teach the curriculum, but it takes a special pers person to teach life lessons. On behalf of the faculty, staff, and students of Old Bridge High School, we are proud to recognize my friend, Mr. Jamie Brown, as the 2015 Teacher of the Year. At this time, I would like to introduce my friend, Mr. Joe Mara, to the podium. Thank you, Mr. Sasso. A good evening, everyone, and congratulations to all tonight's recipients. With pleasure, let me introduce to you Mrs. Ellen Connor the Educational Service Professional for the 2014-2015 school year. Relax, relax. Some history about Mrs. Connor, and it is a long history of involvement and dedicated service to the Old Bridge schools. Mrs. Connor has been a resident of Old Bridge for 45 years. 
She and her husband, Jim, are both graduates of Madison Central High, when the district had two high schools, Madison Central and Cedar Ridge. Mrs. Connor also has three children, Shane, Kevin, and Julie, all graduates of the Old Bridge School System and successful adults. Professionally, in 1998, Mrs. Connor joined the district as a noon hour supervisor. In 2003, she moved to a part-time position in the business office as an accounts payable person. In 2005, her part-time position became a full-time position in the business office. In 2009, her role in the business office was split into two positions, benefit administrator and accounts payable. In 2010, she became full-time benefits administrator for the district, and she continues in that position today. She is a mainstay at our football games where she is a, foot, a ticket seller. She also represents the secretarial staff for the Old Bridge Education Association. And on a minor note, maybe a major note, she and her family are New York Ranger fans, so we know they know hockey. <laughs> now more about her present role in the district. I can safely say that Mrs. Connor meets 98% of all staff members when they're hired. She ensures that everyone gets it right when they complete the numerous documents that are required by all the medical carriers. She communicates to staff members whenever it may be necessary to see her again and stresses the importance of this when there is a change of life situation, an example of which is the birth of a child or marriage, to avoid any costly omissions in their coverage. When a medical carrier makes a mistake and, a, and an employee communicates an issue to her, she is relentless in dealing with them until the correction is made if warranted. In these situations, we should all be glad that she's on our team. Mrs. Connor conducts herself at all times professionally, cooperatively, cooperatively and courteously. And I have a clear example of these characteristics. In the last five days, she has received almost 1,000 enrollment applications, <laughs> fielded a multitude of questions, and the business office has been almost as busy as it is when she's selling football tickets. Each morning, I very quietly and politely say, how are you today, Ellen? And she would respond, all is good with a smile. That is at 8.30 a.m. After a long day, five minutes to five, she's either making copies, reviewing applications for correctness, or, phone, or, answering phone, or answering questions on the phone. Again, very quietly I say to her, are you still okay? And again, her response with a big smile, we are in good shape. Ladies and gentlemen and students, uh, one of our best team players and the Educational Service Professional of the Year, Mrs. Ellen Connor. I'd like to invite Mrs. Colleen Montori, Principal of the Shira Elementary School, to the podium. Thank you. At this time, I ask Jessica Lenegro's family, as well as PTA president, Mrs. Lori Updike, to share the podium with me. Jessica Uvegas Lenegro was many things to many people, but tonight we are here to celebrate her life as Shiraz Teacher of the Year. I wish we could see her pretty smiling face proudly glowing in this achievement. But for now, hopefully we can all find comfort in the words I am about to share. I received a beautiful card from Jessica's family, and it read, next to you. You cannot see or touch me, but I'm standing next to you. Your tears can only hurt me. Your sadness makes me blue. Be brave and show a smiling face. Let not your grief show through. I love you from a different place, yet I'm standing 
next to you. So Jess, I wrote the following in an effort to express what I have known for quite some time. You are truly one of a kind, the best kind. And I can only hope that I am successful in conveying your special qualities on behalf of all of us who were fortunate enough to have known you. Philosopher and mathematician Bertrand Russell once said, more important than the curriculum is the question of the methods of teaching and the spirit in which the teaching is given. That couldn't be more true, and for me, it really epitomizes Jessica. She had an innate ability to inspire, to awaken joy in her students. She had a knack for making difficult subject matter easier to understand. And she always did this fully realizing that fun and humor played a big role in learning. One afternoon while conducting a lesson, she presented the students with an opportunity to win prizes and then proceeded to enter the bathroom, exiting wearing the prizes, huge sunglasses and an old lady shower cap on her head. Now, of course, the children thought this was hysterical, but for those of us who knew Jessica, the mere fact that she would put a shower cap on her head yes. is amazing, since she was probably one of the best dressed teachers in the district who never had a hair out of place. But as I discovered on many occasions, Jessica would go to any lengths to ensure her students grasped the concept and remembered the material. But that wasn't all. Jessica taught her students about life, and the kids often confided in her when they needed guidance. Jessica was too sick last year to work the last couple of months, but that didn't stop her from attending the fifth grade graduation practices and the culminating event. When she showed up for the first practice after an extended absence, the students yelled and screamed with such joy that I thought a rock star had just entered the building. And recently, I was skimming through some old fifth grade material that the students put together in booklet form, and there was a section that began with the heading, my favorite memory of elementary school was. And then the students' responses were listed. As I continued to read them, I noticed the pattern of repetition, and it alluded to receiving instruction in Mrs. Lenegro's class while eating popcorn. Now, as you know, there are many fun activities that are offered during a student's K through five experience. But for so many children, Mrs. Lenegro's class was always a memorable experience. What made me chuckle was the mention of eating popcorn, since that was not, well, as you know, the normal classroom protocol. <laughs> but what I found fascinating was the fact that 25 10-year-olds never said a word about eating in class. <laughs> Frequently, three adults have difficulty keeping a secret. Can you believe 25 kids did not say a word? But the reality is, the children really loved and respected Mrs. Lenegro, and just as she would do anything for them, they would do anything for her. As I attempt to distinguish those special qualities that made Jessica stand out, dedication comes to mind over and over again. You see, Jessica did not get sick overnight. She battled this disease for many years. Some days she would be administered chemotherapy in the morning, and she would work in the afternoon. On one occasion, she was having surgery in the afternoon, and she came to work that same morning. When she knew she had to be out for an extended period of time, she left copious notes and lesson plans that were unbelievably explicit to ensure that there was minimal disruption to the student's instruction. She also communicated with parents, colleagues, and me by phone and email when there were tubes in her body as she lay in her hospital bed. I distinctly recall two weeks before Jessica passed she received an email from a parent inquiring about a book order she placed, concerned that she wouldn't have the books in time for Christmas gifts. Again, from her hospital bed, Jessica informed the parent that the books were in her classroom, and she would place them in a yellow ShopRite bag, and they would be available for pickup the following day in the main office. 
Jessica then called her substitute teacher, told her where the books were located, to place them in a ShopRite bag that was located in her closet, put the parent's name on the bag, and give it to me. Jessica then contacted me to apprise me of the situation so I would be prepared for the parent's arrival. And the next morning, she contacted me again to make sure the bag was in the office. I know I was a little wordy in explaining this circumstance, but I just wanted to emphasize the attention to detail that Jessica demonstrated. Because this, was, this is what she did with everything. She wanted things to be perfect, and they usually were. In this instance, to this day, I don't believe the parent knows that Jessica orchestrated all this from a hospital bed. We will never know where Jessica's influence stops because she has had a positive impact on so many individuals in her brief career as an educator. From the time she was named Student Teacher of the Year at Kane University and through her six years at Shira School. But one thing we do know for sure is that Jessica's accomplishments were many. And for those of us who were lucky enough to be touched by her life, we are better for having known her. Please allow me to take the liberty of being the voice of all the students, parents, colleagues, and friends who Jessica has inspired in countless ways by saying two important words. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in applause as we honor Shiraz 2000 Teacher of the Year, Mrs. Jessica Uvegas Lenegro. Thank you. Okay, I'd like to congratulate all the teachers of the year, and I uh, wish you all a lot of luck, and I really appreciate you working for us. Uh, we're going to have to go into executive session for a short little break, and uh, let me take a roll call. Okay, I need a motion to go into uh, recognition 
uh, vote one and two. I need a motion to re for recognition one and two. Uh, I'll make Andriani, a Andriani will. Uh, okay, Miss Andriani, I need a second. Mr. Borselli. Mr. Borselli. Any discussion? No discussion. Andriani. Yes. Roll call, Mr. Mara. Borselli. Yes. <coughs> Prima. Yes. Ellis Foster. Ellis yes. Foster. Yes, sorry. Mongan. Oh, yes. Oh, without a doubt. 